Oh, you were in the play? Yeah. Oh, I messaged everybody. I was in the play. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to our documentation of the Schooner Hindu Rebuild in Thomaston, Maine. This time we're taking a minor detour to document the build of the timber frame barn that will house the Hindu for the duration of the project. The brief backstory for those who don't know is that the Hindu was built in 1925 in East Booth Bay, Maine, and now she's back to be rebuilt for her next century of sailing. After picking our shipwrights, we purchased property in Thomaston, Maine, and got to work on the rebuild of the schooner Hindu in August 2020. As the nights got colder and the days got shorter, we were up against the clock of nature, which waits for no man, woman, or boat. We knew we'd need some extra hands on deck for this project, so we hired three journeyman shipwrights from the Rockland area. Kale, Cody, and Levi. Our barn team, who, in addition to Josh and I, Volunteers Chriso and Wes pulled the barn together in less than seven weeks. Of course, we also roped in Mike and Simon, our shipwrights, and even had some folks from out of town come in to help. Over the course of the fall, we cut the heavy timber pockets and angles, we cut pumpkins, we cut the purple heart keel for the Hindu, as well as sourcing and cutting the black locust frames. Uh, posts, the vertical center bent posts, so they're 8x8 eight by, eight by 20. So there's six of those. Um, um, there's going to be 16 of those total. Uh, this stack right here is the top plate that's mortised and ship lapped. And then these are the last two corner posts. This one and this one, which are 10 by 10 by 20. The price of traditional building materials skyrocketing due to people's budding interest in home improvements with the pandemic, it made more sense financially to build a timber frame structure. But each of these bents, these are the other four beams. And then these are the rafters, and that's the rafter layout right now. Are they different types of wood? Yeah. Uh, few species. The, the posts are mostly hemlock. Um, the beams came from the west coast and they're 8 by 12 by 30 Douglas fir. And the rafters are native um, spruce and they're 6 by 12. Josh had already designed and built a timber frame structure in Canton, New York, and with his father Bill Rowan, being a historic architect, he had the perfect sounding board to make the project work. Nothing higher than God's honor or the of nature, and then you put nature is still better and taller than your building. Hmm. I think that that was what I was describing. Oh, I never heard that side of it. I like that. Though. On the weekends. This barn raising is brought to you by Hellman's. <laughs> Hellman's. For real men. Look at that real man. Look at these guys. Yeah, you guys are Hellman's men, right? <laughs> How many shipwrights does it take to put together a barn? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. I swear this one's heavier than the other one. 
It, this one's oak. Remember? Yeah. Okay. Wetter. One, two, three, don't take. Oh. The majority of the wood that we got was still wet. Okay. So losing oh it was word. like trying to drag Slide elephants playing dead <laughs> around two, the property. Two, it necessitated a team or effort. Just each joint was dry fit and then taken apart, lubricated, and put back in place. For obvious reasons, we took to calling this tool Thor's hammer. Geniuses. To be fair, this was the first bent we assembled. After doing this one, we had a system that worked like a dream for the rest of the joint assemblies. That's dreamy. That seems to be good. Is it square though? I think that side. Would We used trunnels we made to bisect each joint and hold the barn in place. Even in the midst of COVID, we had people who were willing to come out and help. Nobody got sick. <laughs> barn building with the Amish. Is this an Amish child, Simon? <laughs> Go up to Ben Yoder's sawmill up the way. To prepare for the crane coming to hoist the bents, we laid them all out, one in the rear and four stacked on top of each other in the front. With the joints fit and the trunnels in place, we just needed to set the bents in the bottom plate and set up the top plate to lock it all in. Dwight, Henry, and Sons arrived with their crane and headsets. While we got started with the aftermost bent, Josh got to listen to the headset conversation, which ranged from politics to religion and everything in between, all in joke form. All jokes aside, they were the perfect team to work with. After finishing the aftermost bent, we moved to the front and started bringing those bents up one at a time, going to the aft first. Working from the aft forward, we developed a system that allowed us to raise all five bents in one day. end of that day, it was super gratifying to see the base structure together. We even added a little branch, as is the tradition, on top of the building. But there was still so much more to be done. Okay, so maybe we didn't make the snow. Best laid plans, right? As the snow came, shipwrights Mike and Simon almost successfully concealed their concern about the lack of a structure under which to continue their work with the Hindu. Regardless of the exposure to the weather, they carried on and even smiled. Look, 
the abominable snowman. We've got Hobo Village over here. No one's using the fire right now. In an act of meteorological mercy, the snow melted and we had a streak of beautiful weather to carry on. We set up the rafter structures in the parking lot like big Tonka toys. We got as much of the ship lap as we could onto the roof structures before we raised them. Unfortunately, this was less than a third of the ship lap that needed to go on the roof. We got a later start with the crane that day and were only able to get one fifth of the roof up before dark. The next day the crane came was cold, miserable, and wet, like a day offshore in the winter. Josh was particularly fond of this Japanese-inspired joint in the peak rafter. After the bitter rain came a steely snow, in which we went up and down for what seemed like months in the man lift, assembling the rest of the purlins and the ship lap roofing. At this point, the barn team, as well as the rest of us, were beginning to run on fumes. Early mornings, late nights, and cold weather had everybody a bit at the ragged edge. Having no better options, we dug deep and continued on, regardless of the cold and regardless of exhaustion, knowing that it would be worth it in the end when it was finally done. Although we were strapped in, working on this roof was just as terrifying as it looks. Every stage of construction completed felt like we were really doing it. We were done, and yet <laughs> we just weren't. There was always more to do. Two sides of the roof done, yes. Just a couple little places to patch. It looks like we're done. It's a building. But what about the walls? And what about protecting the roof? The second to last brutal task was getting weather resistant material across the entire roof. We worked in the rain, in the dark, in the snow to get it done. Well, wait, this is a video. I guess I didn't mean to. Hi, honey. What did we just do? This whole roof and the sketchy part on the other side. We had to reach over. Yeah, we hung out of a basket. It's 75. My face here probably well, says it all, but I'm convinced there's there. a special place in hell where Stunning. people have to roof in the winter. Apartment. And finally, the plastic wrap. Everything's raining, but the wait is. Everything's raisin but the weight is Everything's raisin but the weight is Everything's raisin but the weight is Gasoline groceries and our hate is We're here in a blizzard Put it
open the doors on the building. Only one gabled end left to plastic. And that's our ship in a bottle right there. Getting all the battens on before the storm. Oh wait, I think the storm already happened. I mean, I don't... Oh, ice in my beard. Well, that's another Wes over here. He's, he's the master. All right. All right, Wes. Walk us through this. What what is this? You got ice in your beard. You got ice in my beard, and I got ice in my beard. In your beard that was in the refrigerator. Yes. Yeah. So, why are we celebrating? We're celebrating because we got the the, uh, the barn wrapped up, and now we don't have to work in the weather. And what kind of weather was that? That was outside that the barn <laughs> needed to be wrapped up for. We got a blizzard. Oh, a blizzard. Yeah. A blizzard. So like, what are we talking? An inch or two or three? No, it's only ten inches. Ten inches coming down in a couple hours. A couple hours, yeah. Yeah. There's a little snow in the building, but that's only because we didn't get all the plastic. This last piece up here didn't get in there until just a little bit ago. Yeah, up in a blizzard and the wind and the man lift, but we're pretty cloud, pretty proud of it. And so it was that we built a timber frame boat shop for the Spooner Hindu for her centennial rebuild in Thomaston, Maine. Rocket science. What are we going to do with the barn, Josh? What's happening with it? What are we talking about? You know, like what's going to happen once the Hindus out of there? Um, what is going to happen? NASA. Come on. Wow. <laughs> well, we're going to um, we're going to make an ice skating rink uh, first off, most importantly, and then uh, we're all going to show up in ice skates and we're going to push the building over and back onto the slab. But we're going to do it with a disco ball and some good disco music, um, so it'll be easy. Awesome. And Simon, you're going to bring your leather skis or skates? I think I might bring skates? good crampons for that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did. I mean, it's more, ice axes more challenging with ice skates. <laughs> and I'm bringing but, the camera because yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. my job. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, we'll see you two years down the line for that one. Yeah, we're yeah. saying November we're of next that year. This fall. The, the boat's not going to be done this buddy. fall. It'll be done June. June of 2022, right? Okay. The shipwright yeah, says done. yes, so done it enough. will yeah, be done so. Done enough uh -huh. to go in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we may get around to building this house on the property, but for now, we'll stick to rebuilding the Schooner Hindu. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support the project, come for a sail with us this summer in Provincetown. We'll be here through the end of September, sailing every single day with the public at 3 and for a sunset sail, as well as doing private charters. You can also visit our GoFundMe and support us there, or follow us on all of the social medias and tell all your friends to do the same. We look forward to seeing you for the next video, and feel free to be in touch in the meantime. Have a great summer.